Hello everyone and welcome to this week's EGU webinar. My name is Jenny Turton and I'm the uh, incoming Early Career Science Union level representative for the EGU. Um, today we are going to talk about how to convene at EGU 22 and also give some advice for if you wanted to convene in the future at upcoming EGUs um, in 2023. Um, so firstly, let me just share my screen. Okay, so I will just point out that um, my colleague Meriel, who is the Early Career Science Representative for Ocean Sciences, also helped out with the preparation of the, uh, the PowerPoint for today. So EGU 22 is just three weeks away now, and everybody is very excited um, that we can at least partly meet in person, as well as having the digital component of the conference. But this obviously draws some differences from the last two years, and in fact, the last 10 years, um, and so uh, we wanted to produce this webinar today to just give conveners a little bit more information about what's going to happen. So firstly, all of the sessions are short oral presentations. So we have not got any posters or any VPCO this year. Presentations are either five, six or seven minutes. And this has been decided by uh, the convener list and also the program committee. So please take a look at the program um, if you want to double check your time. The in-person presentations take place in lecture rooms as in years before COVID. Um, the technical setup is a little bit different and I will go on to that shortly. Online presentations are streamed live into the Vienna Centre and also onto the di digital platform with the help of conference assistants. So conveners, you will have a conference assistant who will help with uh, loading up the next presentations, with um, the technicalities in the room, and um, if you have any questions about how the actual presentations will, will, will function. But essentially, there will be two laptops um, in the room, one which will be connected to Zoom and will be used to live share the screen of the content, and one that will be connected to the big screen in the room. Um, and this is, this is why this year um, there is a little bit more technology involved, um, but it should be nice and smooth. Uh, the questions from online attendees will be able to be seen by the session convener and the chairperson, um, and these will then be um, live spoken to the rest of the room so that the questions online are also um, heard in the room. As I mentioned before, no poster or VP co presentations, and this was largely because of the increase in risk when it comes to hy hygiene conditions uh, because of the mixing and the, the lack of designated seats. With just a few weeks to go now, what should you be doing as a convener? Or maybe even what should you be doing as an attendee? Um, and first thing I would recommend is that to take a look at the time blocks for this year's conference. They're a little bit different. And so this is to give people more time to um, have breaks and get outside. Hopefully the weather will be nice at the end of May, um, but also to have um, less crowded spaces around the places where people can get coffee and refreshments. So the time blocks are a little bit different. If your session is still undergoing some changes, if people are having to withdraw or people are, um, are still uh, unsure whether they're registering digitally, uh, session changes can still occur up until the 10th of May. And then if anything else changes after that sort of last minute, um, that is something different. That's when you can speak to Copernicus. Um, the, the hygiene rules in Vienna are a little bit stricter than they are in other parts of Austria because of this being such a large event. So you need to take a look at the guidelines online and you have a few more days if you need to speak to Copernicus or EGU or withdraw and change to having a digital participant if those uh, measures can't be um, fulfilled. At least two conveners are required to be in person for a session and the other conveners can be online. And please familiarize yourself with your session. Who in your session is presenting from Vienna and who is gonna be presenting from online? At this stage, it should be possible to see at least who is presenting in person in Vienna uh, because the deadline for this has been closed. And then online people from next week have the opportunity to upload digital content to the platform. Um, and this is highly recommended if you're doing a digital presentation. Um, the program itself is a little bit different 
not only in terms of posters and picos, but also in terms of when meetings are happening. So approximately half of the division meetings are now taking place the week before the General Assembly, and half of them are taking place during the General Assembly. And this is why we recommend that you check the, the programme for your specific meeting. Similarly, most of the medal lectures take place on the evenings during the General Assembly from 7 till 8 p.m., but not all of them. Again, some of them are during the morning or during uh, the afternoon. So please take a look at when those are and you can start to make your um, personal programme from now. Uh, there is some uh, information I wanted to highlight that uh, has, is, is a little bit different, again, because of the situation. So we're not having a icebreaker activity like we normally do on the Sunday before the conference when it's pre-COVID times when everybody was in person. But there is going to still be a first time attendee and mentor meetup. Um, and this is on Monday, 12 to 1. So if you're a mentor or mentee, and this information should be communicated to you in the next few days to weeks, then this is a place you can go. Also, if you've never attended EGU before and you are unsure about what to do or what sessions to go to, this is a place for you to go as well. Then there is the Early Career Scientist Networking Reception, which is Tuesday from 7 till 8.30. And this is one of the only networking receptions that is taking place inside the Vienna Centre. There will be other networking events taking place, such as individual divisions having, um, having social events or networking events. And most of these are taking place off site. Most of the divisions will contact um, or communicate this via some social media, such as Twitter or Facebook, but also check for announcements that might come through emails or listservs, however your division best communicates. Then what should you do a few days before you arrive in Vienna? Um, if you are planning to have additional meetups or breakout rooms for your session as a convener, please let everybody know. Um, it could be that you would like to have a pop-up event following or a networking event, maybe outside of the centre. This is the sort of time to let everybody know just a few days before. Please, can I just remind you that when you are communicating with um, people who are in your session, but also people who are not in your session, uh, gender neutral language is required. Um, please nominate three judges at least per presentation that has indicated that they will take part in the Outstanding Student and PhD Candidate Presentation, OSPP contest. There's a little bit more information about this a little bit later on in the, um, in the meeting, um, but in, in the webinar, sorry, but uh, yeah, you need to at least nominate three people to judge the presentation um, per, per person. If there are any last minute changes to your session, the best thing to do is to always update Copernicus at egu22 at copernicus.org email address. Uh, see whether your presenters have uploaded a pre-recorded talk online a few days before. Um, if you are attending digitally and you are presenting, it is recommended um, and hopeful that you would upload your content prior to the conference. And this will then be shown at the conference. And this means that the, um, the conference assistant and the convener in your session will be able to bring this up to the screen at your allotted time and can control um, the, the page turning or the slide movement. It is possible for you to present live by sharing your screen, but this really isn't recommended. Um, and we have a lot of the, the technology and the microphones and, the, and everything set up so that if you can pre-record and upload your content, that would be uh, not you don't have to pre-record your talking but at least put your content up online um, the deadline for that is 6 p.m the day before your session starts and of course familiarize yourself with the latest COVID-19 rules whilst we're hopeful that nothing will change in the next three to four weeks who knows um, so we do recommend that you check both the EGU website but also the Vienna and Austria information when you prepare to travel because of the, the situation, there is a slightly different procedure in terms of registration than what would have happened a few years ago. So we do recommend as conveners that you arrive at the conference centre well ahead of your session start time if you need to pick up your registration documents. So please bring your ID and your vaccination proof with you when you're collecting your name badge. Um, and then you will be given a wristband. And this wristband and your name badge needs to be worn for the whole conference. And this means that you won't need to show your documents again and again every time you move around the centre. Um, it is still required that FFP2 masks should be worn when you're inside the venue. 
and there will be a one-way system in most of the lecture halls, at least the bigger ones where there is more than one door. Um, if there is only one door, please allow people exiting to uh, leave the room before the new audience enters. And as conveners, if you can um, sort of remind the audience of that when they first come in, that would be really helpful. When you get to Vienna and you're inside the lecture hall where you are convening, these are some of the things that we suggest that you do. So check that your chairperson and conveners are in place if you're not the only person who's there and also see which speakers in person are around. Keep your session to time. Um, even though the sessions are shorter, five, six, seven minutes, and everybody, uh, many people who are attending online will have uploaded their talks, it is still important that you keep your session to time. Uh, we suggest that speakers use the wireless mouse to point for the green arrow rather than the laser pointer. Um, each lecture hall will have a, a conference tool uh, for the speaker, which will have um, either a pointer or a laser. Um, and this is better than sort of a laser pointer that you might bring with you because then people online wouldn't be able to see where you're pointing to. But with the one that's given to you in the conference uh, venue in the lecture hall, um, it links up to the screen so that people presenting or attending digitally can also see the arrow. Uh, the microphone situation is, uh, is, is complicated, but there are multiple microphones in each room. One on the lectern where you will stand to do your presentation, one on the convening desk where the conveners sit, and this will be switched on at all times. So we do recommend that you don't have discussions during the presentations. And then there'll be a number of um, microphones throughout the room, either freestanding or, or from the ceiling. Um, so that will pick up some audience noise as well. And this will all be then fed into the digital platform so that people at home can hear. And so it's quite important um, that there aren't too many conversations happening whilst the speakers are, are presenting. But it also means that we don't have to disinfect microphones when we pass, if we won't need to do any passing around of microphones. Um, if there is an audience question, uh, you can ask them to move to one of the microphones that's mounted so that they can ask this question and the people um, digitally can hear this as well. If it is difficult to hear, then the conveners should repeat so that people online can hear. And finally, we ask that the presenters are mindful of the, uh, the participants in the room. So if you have a number of speakers um, in your session and you do not know how to correctly pronounce their names, it is much more polite to ask them how they would like to be introduced and also which pronouns they would prefer if you're going to introduce them or use their pronouns. Um, if they require any additional assistance or any introductory remarks, you could also ask them this at the start of the session before um, the session starts. The outstanding student and PhD candidate presentations, the OSPP, are still occurring this year, um, and there will be three judges assigned to each participant. These three judges can come from volunteers who have um, uh, requested that they can be a judge a few weeks ago. Um, the conveners can nominate chairs or conveners themselves if they know somebody. You can ask your colleagues if you want to, as long as they then fulfill the, the judging requirements. However, these should not be co-authors of the participating presentations and everybody who's a judge should have had their PhD um, or above or be um, an expert in their field so that they're able to give feedback to the, to the students. Please at the start of your session, but also throughout um, the, the General Assembly, remind your judges to evaluate the presentations um, and also check which participants might still require judges last minute if some, still somebody has not been found. Um, each division has an OSPP judge and there is also an OSPP coordinator um, overall, um, so maybe reach out to them if you're having difficulties finding any judges for your um, participants. So this is all the information that um, is important from sort of now until the GA, so the next month, but maybe you're interested in what happens at the very start of the process or if you want to be a convener for EGU 23, how does that work? So announcements are made really in the next few months. Um, around June time this year uh, or, or last year, the process started for EGU 22. And so around between June and August time, there will be the opportunity to propose a session for a union symposia or a great debate. And then around June to September time for science sessions and short courses. And the session program is finalized around September, October time, if this follows the same schedule as it did this year. 
if you want to propose a session, if you think that your science is not quite covered in the sessions that are already available, or you're just very interested in proposing a session, including one that already has been proposed before, if you want to um, ask to help on that session or, or take the lead on convening, then I suggest you reach out to your colleagues and decide on what you would like the convener theme to be, the session theme, what your team would be, and also who your OSPP coordinator would be. Um, you need at least two conveners and a maximum of five per session. And in total, you can only take on three co-convenerships and one convener role. Um, if you are convening a great debate or union symposia, you're allowed an additional convenership and short courses are not included. You can convene as many of those as you would like to. Uh, convener teams should be diverse in terms of many different things, but especially in terms of countries and institutes, career stage, gender and other diversity and also in scientific approach. Um, and those that are qualified for this can have the, the EDI, the Equality, Diversity, Inclusion logo on their session to highlight that their convener teams are diverse. That is all of the main information that I have. I will now just stop sharing my screen. I can see that there's a few questions in the chat. If you have any questions and you would like me to at least attempt to answer them today, please drop them in the Q&A box or the chat. Uh, the Q&A box is the best option, um, but the chat is, I can see there are a few questions in the chat already. Um, so one is, hi, my co-convener can't participate in the call. Would you be able to distribute the PowerPoint afterwards, please? Yes, this webinar will be is recorded and will be uploaded to the EGU YouTube channel, um, and then it can be distributed from there. So you'll be able to send this to your co-convener. FFP2 masks have to be worn the entire time and also the speakers. Um, the FFP2 mask requirement is whilst you're moving around, whilst you are not seated, and also whilst you're not eating and drinking. Um, there is a microphone that will be in front of the lectern, in front of the speakers who are in the lecture hall. Um, at this stage, it has not been communicated whether they should be worn around the face still or if they can be taken off during the, the speaking part of the presentation. Uh, that's something that might be updated in the next few days, just as the new information from the Austria guidelines is coming in. But for now, I would recommend that you at least have plenty of FFP2 masks with you for your um, trip to Vienna and then look out for any more guidelines that you see um, by EGU through the social media or emailed. Um, another question we have is, will the tech be available throughout the session or just during setup? Uh, there will be a conference assistant in the room the entire time of the session um, and so they will help out with the technology and also with the loading of the presentations for the next speaker. Um, so the, the conveners themselves and the chairs don't really have to do too much in terms of the tech, this will be controlled by um, the convener, by the convening assistant, the, the conference assistant. Um, so if you're not too tech savvy, I think that should be fine, it's, um, it's nothing too much to worry about. Um, are we going to have help with online questions is another question. Uh, yes, so again, the conference assistant will be there. Um, there will be two laptops, one for the conference assistant and one for the convener or the chair. Both will have access to Zoom where the questions will be coming in. Um, and it's required, this is why sort of two conveners are required in person is so that we recommend the one convener or the chairperson is taking charge of introducing and keeping check of the time, asking for questions. The other convener can be checking the online platform um, and Zoom to make sure there are any questions coming in there. Um, but we do anticipate that there will be questions um, and there will therefore be two conveners and um, a conference assistant in each room. For OSPP, this is another question, sorry, do we judge them only by the five to seven minute presentation? I remember reading about the option of uploading additional material, longer recorded talk or posters, should this be part of judging? Uh, yeah, that's right. There will be the option to upload additional material in the next week. Um, it, this should go live. And this was similar to last year where you were able to upload videos, pre-recorded talks, posters, additional content that you wanted to for the website. The judging rules for the OSPP will be also released, they're communicated in the next few weeks. Um, and at the minute, I'm not sure if this is just the five to seven minute, five, six or seven minute presentation. Because it's not required that everybody uploads content to the digital platform on top of this, I would assume that the OSPP judging should remain to the five, six and seven minute presentation so that it's fair. However, 
um, this, this should be communicated. And if you are selected as a judge, you will get uh, detailed guidelines on, on what to do. Um, just have a look. OSPP was done for posters before. How is it going to work this year, especially due to not having restrictions on the number of slides, etc.? Um, it was done for posters previously, but it's also been done for um, VPCO and PICO sessions prior to the, the COVID um, changes. And so last year also it was for digital content. Um, it's, it's for the presentation. So each one is five, six or seven minutes. So instead of being restricted by slides, they're restricted by time, I would say. Um, and so you will take into account the, the content, the scientific content of the presentations, but also um, the, how they present their science and, and whether this is uh, presented, if you've got feedback for their presentation style as well. Um, so again, the, the information on the OSPP things will be communicated and this should be made quite clear. Um, only the online speakers should upload their pre-recorded presentation right. So um, the people who are attending in person do still have the opportunity to upload content online. The digital platform is for everybody. Um, however, you do not need to upload pre-recorded things if you are attending in Austria. Um, you will need to have your presentation ready and this will be needed to be uploaded ahead of time so that the um, conference assistant can just quickly move from one presentation to another. There won't be time for you to come up with a USB stick, for instance, and put this in. Um, exactly how that will happen will be communicated to people who are presenting in person. Um, however, you can upload content pre-recorded online, but it's um, where we mean upload, where we say upload content. Um, it doesn't have to be a pre-recorded video of your presentation. It could just be the slides of your presentation as a PDF. It doesn't have to be you already speaking over this pre-recorded content. Um, so there's a bit of flexibility, but if you're presenting in person, um, have your presentation ready, but you do not need to be pre-recorded over the top of it speaking. This you will do live um, in the lecture hall as you would have prior to COVID. Um... Additional question. So one question, um, do we need to pass the microphone around the audience if there are questions? Uh, no, there's, as I, I sort of mentioned before, there's uh, a number of microphones in the room to pick up sound and this will be um, sent automatically to the digital platform. Uh, the conveners are not required to sort of switch buttons or anything of the microphones. The microphone at the front by the speaker, the convener table and in the audience will all um, happen automatically. So no, there is no passing of, um, of microphones. However, there might be a passing of this tool to the speaker so that they can use the, the pointer, the, the clicker, uh, and that should be disinfected. If, you're, if you are using this in your session, um, please disinfect it before you hand it to the next speaker. Okay, just check for another question. Will the content be available before and after the meeting for how long? Yes. So the content will be available um, for two months in total. So during and after the conference, which was the same as last year. Um, and this is um, to allow people to have a little bit more time if they're attending digitally or in person to view all of the additional content and the uploading of, um, of different uh, materials. Uh, we do ask, however, that you upload the material ahead of time. So that it's available for this for this long period and people are able to see it um, as opposed to just uploading it before the day before your talk there, whilst there is a deadline it's of course better so that everybody can see things ahead of time okay i think those are at least all of the questions i can see in the q a box for the moment uh perhaps um there are a few more coming in uh let me just double check my notes and i can make sure i've not missed out on anything to let you know. Um, yes, essentially, um, this will be a new uh, sort of experience for conveners and also for presenters and for anybody attending, uh, each of you that it is a hybrid situation. Um, however, um, there is a lot of things that we can take from last year, that the digital aspect and also things that are new um, for, for the in-person section. Um, but with the, the convener team and the information that's been previously sent out and also will be sent out in the next two weeks, um, hopefully that it turns it into a very successful and very smooth system um, and everybody can have uh, a nice COVID-free <laughs> conference experience in uh, 2022. 
Um, I can't see any further questions coming in from the chat. I really appreciate all of the questions that we've had and I hope that I was able to answer them. Um, but if not, uh, there will be more guidelines and information sent around in the next few weeks. So I recommend that you keep an eye on the EGU22 website, but also the social media account um, and any other additional webinars with information that come out in the next few weeks. I'll just wait maybe a few more minutes to see if there are any more questions that come in. Okay, I can't see anything else, neither the chat or the Q&A. So thank you everybody for your, um, for your interest in this webinar. And if you have any other um, questions, just keep an eye on um, all of the communication channels that EGU uses for the next few weeks. Oh, uh, there's one more question. Just to be sure, can online participant present in live or do they have to record their talks? Uh, they can they present live. Uh, or they can pre-record, there are options. So um, you, if you upload your content and you would like to still speak live, that's totally fine. If you would just upload a, a presentation like I have here and speak over in the Zoom call, such as this webinar, that's totally fine. If for instance, the time zone doesn't work for you uh, when your session is, you can also pre-record over this talk as long as it keeps to the five, six or seven minutes you've been allocated and then uh, the conference assistant can play this into the room. Um, so really there are, are different ways available, um, either live or pre-recorded. If you're available to join live, that's much better because then you can respond with questions and answers to the audience. But of course, not everybody is on the European time zone. Um, so this also makes it a little bit easier for other people to present. So, thank you very much. I hope you all have a lovely uh, morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you're located. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing you all in Vienna and digitally in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Bye.